this morning I got a text message from a friend and he says, can you please give me an experience share? I am in a medical profession and I'm in a very bad physical shape. And he's asking, wasn't there a time in your life where your health was really not all that great? And then you took action, you actually took a career pivot. And yes, there is something that was indeed the case. So I think the reason he asked me that question is because the type of medical activity he does is, is very physically intense because he has to lift people a lot and manipulate their bodies. So he's probably like, I cannot do this forever. So uh, it, it got me inspired to talk about this topic here, uh, abandoning success to chase, to chase uncertainty. Because if you think about it, this guy is a medical professional. He is successful by all means. Uh, and I was in a similar situation. Uh, we got to go back a few years to 2002. And I was working as a detective for the Luxembourg government. And all of a sudden, I get the news that apparently I have this chronic condition that gives me constant inflammation along my spine. And if I wouldn't start very strong medication for the rest of my life, they told me you'll be paralyzed and in a wheelchair within two years. Now, I didn't want to accept that. It was too early for me. I was in my 20s, too early for me to become a drug user, quite frankly, a drug addict for the rest of my life. So what I decided to do is I decided to try a few things. And I made a huge change to my diet. I um, cut out a lot of my dairy consumption, my red meat consumption, my sugars. And uh, all of a sudden, it really became much better. And I never started those drugs. And I, I, I really, I'm, it is a chronic condition. I am diagnosed with it. But I've lived with it ever since uh, in a very... A good way like I have achieved everything I want and, and more and I have a lot more goals to achieve but it was true at the time that the the sometimes very physical work of me being a detective sometimes undercover that was not going to be the best thing for for my back like I don't imagine that nowadays I would want to like get into these physical confrontations that sometimes were part of the job. So, but what, what, what also needs to be said is that I was on a very nice track. I was uh, employed by the government. My income was an autopilot. There was literally no way I could have lost that job um, other than be doing something, committing a, a very serious crime. And, but it was what I referred to as my golden cage. Uh, I, sometimes people say you wear your golden shackles, right? Uh, by all means, I had what most people probably wanted. Uh, stability, predictability, enough money, um, several vacations a year, the house, the picket fence, all that kind of thing. But I knew, I always knew there's a lot more for me in store and I don't want to be bored there's got to be more like I cannot just follow this this career uh, here in 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 within the government structure so I had to do something uh, that is essentially abandoning success to chase uncertainty what I did was I immigrated from Luxembourg the small country landlocked by France Belgium and Germany at the age of 28, and I came to the United States, Oxford, Ohio, more specifically, and I, st I literally started from scratch. Being a student at an American university, learning something that I had not a lot of knowledge about. I decided to study computer science, software engineer, interactive media, and... <clears throat> After graduation, I uh, picked up a job. I was a software developer in Cincinnati, Ohio, working on a big project for Crossroads Church. It's a mega church in, in, uh, in Cincinnati. 
But after a year, I quickly realized, hmm, this is kind of the same thing in a different field. Again, you are a beloved employee. You are on track for something that is probably very sustainable. But I had to abandon success again to chase uncertainty. So what bigger uncertainty can there be than to throw yourself into self-employment? I can tell you there's not a lot of things. Well, I mean, leaving a country, leaving your entire existence behind and immigrating, that's, that's a big step, which I never regret. It's like the best thing I've ever done. But then going into self-employment is kind of the next big thing, right? And it was also phenomenal for me because it led to me earning my own money. It led to me growing as an entrepreneur, starting a team, having a company that went from uh, four figures to five figures to six figures. Uh, this year I achieved seven figures. When going from someone who has one company to owning several companies and now finally being at a situation where there's a new version of abandoning success to chase uncertainty. And that is, I let Andrea here in the audience run the companies. She does that very brilliantly. And I focus on what the next frontier is for me, and that is cryptocurrencies and decentralized finance. And um, if you look at what I have done with my life is a journey through um, what Robert Kiyosaki explains in his book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. You go from being employed to being self-employed to being a business owner to being an investor. And I can tell you, it is very, very exciting to go through these stages. And I'm not going to lie, the last stage of being an investor is a lot of fun because truly making money while you sleep finally becomes a thing. I mean, as a business owner, you don't, no, your team makes money for you and your systems make money for you, but you still need to be actively involved to orchestrate and manage and guide. And thank goodness, Andrea is doing that for me right now. But as an investor, you truly, I mean, you have no idea what cool things are out there, investment vehicles that make money for you while you sleep. And I'm not even talking only about crypto and DeFi. I'm talking about uh, investing in general. But you need to work yourself up to a point where you have enough investment capital so that it moves the needle for you. Because um, if you just have $1,000 to put into the S&P 500, yes, that yields uh, results, but maybe not enough to, to lead a cool life and do all of the cool things. That is my reality right now. I have more passive income coming in every day than I can spend. And Andrea and I, we use that to live a life that others can only dream of. We travel, there's nothing we have to say no to, and we get to do exactly what we want. I get to teach, to be present, and to make a difference, to make an impact on my life and on people who want to have an impact or be impacted. So uh, the gist of this here is that Whenever you feel that you are in a situation where uh, something is not right, like in the case of my friend where he has uh, poor health and he knows I cannot be lifting people for the rest of my life, I need to move to the next thing. Well, guess what it means? It means you have to abandon whatever success you have right now to, ch to chase uncertainty. And that is quite frankly how I have navigated myself into my version of the American business and investor dream. Now, I'm still uh, relatively speaking young. I turned 42 years old recently. And, you know, I have, I have at least, <laughs> at least 40 more years of uh, shenanigans ahead of myself uh, to do 
awesome things. Stay connected with me on all the different social channels, especially my Instagram. I show a lot of behind the scenes. Uh, it's going to be really cool. Tomorrow, I'm in Texas, San Antonio right now. Tomorrow night, we'll fly to, to Amsterdam. And then I will meet up there with my mother, but also the business-wise with uh, an investor that is a whale in crypto who invests hundreds of thousands of dollars in cryptos that I'm interested in. And it's always very important that you know the community. So uh, that's that. Uh, we have BIE, I don't know, I probably butcher your name completely in the audience. And he sent me a message actually earlier. Uh, and I'm going to take advantage to answer you. So you kind of... You said he wants the opportunity to talk to me, advise and tell me about sustainability, growth, opportunity, public relations and establishment. He's a young vet, I, I assume veterinary uh, practitioner, still at college in uh, Uganda. And he, he just kind of wants to pick my brain on a few things. And I said, well, give me a more specific question. And he said, sure, how, can, how best can I utilize opportunities in my journey of establishment well you know i think the best way uh, i mean this is of course i i don't have a lot of context here but the best way to be established is always to make yourself indispensable what do i mean by that whether you are self-employed or employed i uh, doesn't matter if you are employed then your client is your boss if you are self-employed then your clients are your bosses <laughs> isn't that true frank so make yourself indispensable uh, talking about establishment is getting into a field getting into a relationship with someone where you create value and you slowly but surely create so much value that it's it's very uh, the pain of taking you out of the equation is is just too big they don't want to change that anymore and you achieve that at the beginning of your career by being responsible for all of the things that are essential for your boss or your client and also here is the big one you own the relationships that are vital Always, you are either the connector, okay, in, in case where you have a boss, and let's say there's like important people who come to the clinic every day, you want to own the relationships with the biggest clients of your boss's business. You want to be the person they ask for. That's very important. Now, if you're self employed, then it, yeah, it's, it goes kind of the same way. You have to always like be the first in line with where the money comes from in terms of owning the connections. A lot of business owners these days want to outsource and uh, offshore and outsource. And that is, you know, it's, it's convenient, but you don't own those business relationships. And every person who is working for themselves and um, outsourcing and offshoring and using uh, freelancers and all of that outside consultants, they always need to put themselves first. They are never going to be able to put you, your business first. They need to put themselves first. Okay, so hopefully that answers, and, and that is uh, the beginning of journey of establishment. Uh, later on, as you get more levers, uh, more leverage to keep people in a certain position, you can start uh, thinking about more like uh, using using how outside help. Okay, but it's not something for the beginning of your journey. So uh, that's how I interpreted your question. I hope it helps a little bit um, and you can definitely send me more questions and then I'll use those live events to uh, give you answers. Um, Frank, how cool you're coming uh, to the stage and uh, let's have a chat. What's on your mind? Shankar, how are you today? Uh, excellent. I have a lot Thanks of fun. For, uh, thank you for sharing this story. Uh, 
I have to ask a selfish question. Mm -hmm. Is there a possibility of getting a recording? I thought this was so good. I wasn't prepared to record it, but I should have. I didn't. I don't want to hear. This is such a thoughtful approach to your success journey, a great introduction to other people who uh, your bio kind of, if you will, was just so well delivered and a fearless journey, by the way. So I'm really impressed with what you've been able to accomplish in the short time you've uh, been here as uh, in your earning years, if you will. Mm -hmm. So a uh, very impressive story indeed. Love to share it with others. Thank you. Yes, Frank, you are in luck. I am I have learned to be a multitasker. So even though this is a live audio event on LinkedIn, I have a separate camera that records me for my YouTube channel. And as soon as I have released that, I will happily send you the link. And you know, I'm very grateful for your support. Absolutely. Just keep going. <clears throat> it sounds like you got a busy uh, travel schedule ahead of you. Maybe you can tell us when you get to Europe, you yeah. can uh, uh, invite us into what you learned when you get there. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. As I mentioned, for those on Instagram, they can follow me there for more of like a behind the scenes view of my everyday adventures. But I also plan to go live here on LinkedIn uh, every day um, if I can. I have a business partner who really inspires me. Um, you know who she is, Shanae Moray. And she says there's nowadays in the times of AI and ChatGPT and all of that, there's nothing more powerful to build a public relation than doing this very scary thing and uncomfortable thing of, of a holding a, hosting a live event. And I think it's absolutely right because even with a very small audience, uh, like right now it's the three of us in here, you just leave such a lasting impact and you never know what happens, you know, and even uh, for those interested in, in sales or referrals, it's just so powerful because, um, yeah, it's, it's the closest thing digitally to that you can do to meet someone and, and really have an experience that is not crafted by AI and pre-programmed agendas. So I actually, when I do those lives, I just pick the uh, title and the topic uh, and then I just go with it. I have somewhat of an idea what I want to talk about, but I don't have a script or anything like that. And it's a, it's a lot of fun. Could I ask a selfish question yes. uh, relating to crypto and uh, candidate Trump's, uh, former President Trump's mm -hmm. endorsement of crypto? Mm -hmm. What are, what do you what are your thoughts around that as you wrap yeah. up here? I know. Well, uh, as you may know, I was in Nashville when uh, President Trump or former President Trump came uh, took the stage and spoke about uh, crypto, but. What also was the case is that the day before, uh, RFK gave a speech and he is very pro-crypto too, but you could very clearly see that RFK truly understands crypto, believe it, believes in its mission and would, you know, in the unlikely case he gets elected, would definitely move towards building up treasuries uh, in, in Bitcoin for the US. Um, for Mr. Trump, unfortunately, the uh, event was just another industry event where he knew he had to come and say the right things. So I think he will be open in a, in a very opportunistic way to using this tool crypto to do with it what he needs it to do maybe a part of it to gain votes, part of it to actually truly be an economic engine for uh, the nation. But he, he, I think, again, I, I think it's an opportunistic approach. It is not an, an ideological approach. Thank you for that. <clears throat> I'll share this and we can talk offline another time. Commentator I've seen on you, YouTube, a guy named Gerald Salente, uh, we'll always refer to the banksters 
<laughs> hey, so I've, I borrowed that phrase because they're the ones that want to block all the, uh, they certainly don't want anybody to mess with their transactions. And, you know, so uh, I'm humored by that, but I thought banksters is a very <laughs> timely comment. Use that every want. But anyway, yeah. thank you for this, and I'll give it back to you. Appreciate your time. Um, well, I'm I'm really appreciative of you partaking in this, and uh, I will uh, end this live now. And again, once I have the recording up on my channel, I will let you know. And then uh, we'll meet again very, very soon here on LinkedIn or somewhere else. For now, have a great rest of your day.